Hi, so apparently while I was in Brazil last year in Africa, I missed out on um, the brand new proclamation that um, Kimbanda is very real in the United States, and I just was not aware because, again, I was abroad and learning things. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to say it. So, I first started working with Kimbanda through various houses, and we all know that, at least you should by now, that um, the Condomble house, or House of Condomble, whatever, from Carlos Montenegro, Montenegro is a known scammer and fraudster. So, we know his name is not even Montenegro, it's a Puerto Rican last name, he's not Brazilian, he made up his whole lineage from Brazil, and he's not from Brazil. So, there's that group. And then you have the other appropriator, Nicolas Frit Fritzvold, who um, is like Norwegian. He claims to be having met people from the Caribbean and taught him Obeya. He wrote a book about that. He has the Eshu book. He has a Pamajira book, just like the Garden of Apollo, Garden of Blood and Bones. He is initiated in Apollo. He is initiated in Ifa. He is initiated in ceremonial magic, but his main thing is ceremonial magic in Goetia. So everything he does is brings in this Goetian, this demonic element. So his house, even though he claims to be so well known in um, Brazil, I've been in Sao Paulo. Um, I've lived in Bahia. Um, and I've been talking about and asking about him for literally, what is it, six to seven years now. And I can't find anyone who knows him in Brazil. or he's my, I think he's in Minas Gerais, but I can't find anyone who actually... Um, knows about him and read his books in Brazil. Lots of people outside of Brazil have heard about him, but people actually in Brazil don't know who the fuck he is. So, um, yeah, he spawned through Jesse Hathaway and that wolf and goat bullshit. Um, I met them before they became the wolf and goat people, back when Jesse was a, like a prostitute escort in uh, you know New Orleans um, French Quarter. So, I verse I tried to get a reading from Candelo. No, through Candelo show, uh, through Conjurman Ali. Conjurman Ali, and I still have the email. He could not actually do my reading. I gave him my information, gave him the money. He gave me my money back and gave me an email saying he could not read me. So that's and that's before that was when I was just scratching Paulo. That's before I got anything else. When I was still kind of green, I had my late case, I had my warriors, and I got scratched. Could not read me worth a damn to the point where he gave my money back. And then I tried it with Jesse Hathaway. Same thing. He could not read me for shit. So he had needed Nicholas to read me via email. And the fuckery they gave me was so um, not only not accurate, but so off the board that when I did start working with them, I started to have attacks from demons um, from Goetia because basically they decided to take Goetic symbols and make them deal with, do you deal with some type of illness? Hmm? No. Um, so basically... Um, they, it was like a lot of fuckery. I had to do a lot of cleansing and I had to wipe my hands of it. But they keep coming back up as people who know Kimbanda when they don't. And they actually keep saying they go to Brazil and all these different things. But maybe they're just learning this Luciferian, Luciferian mix, Goetia type of Kimbanda um, that everyone else says is bullshit. So... And actually, no, I know somebody who um, actually does that type of um, Kimbanda, and even he's not as, let's say, negative or deals with demons like they do. So anyway, um, people can get into Kimbanda several ways. Sometimes they do it through Umbanda, and sometimes they do it through Kimbanda. Um or sometimes it happens they get an Eshio Parmigiera through initiation in one of the three major or four major um, nations of Candomblé. So Ketu, Efon, 
JJ, Angola Bantu. So because during initiations you get you get quote unquote scratch, you get cut, and those are um, mainly I would say voodoo and Congo based type of ritual. But you do sometimes get, um, or some people do get entities like Eshus and Pomegiris that come uh, as part of the initiation. And so that does happen. You do not get cut to get into Kimbanda per se. I've been in some houses where during Charisma or Lent, they do cut you for protection throughout a... Um, particular like it's it's a cut it's for protection through the lent period and then it goes away and they do it again but it's not like an initiation and it's just so much because i was watching some youtube stuff and i was just like are you got to be kidding me um there was a cuban who is teaching a white kid how to do kimbanda and it was the saddest Kimbanda shrine I've ever seen in my life. It was just one kind of iron fermented trident and then inside a bowl and some coins and a couple shells and then some dirt. And I'm like, that's not a sentimental or for any Pombajira. That's not a complete anything for any type of spirit within Kimbanda. Yet yeah, this guy was talking about he was an expert in Kimbanda or that, you know, he's celebrating his second anniversary or he's claiming himself as a Tata. And I'm just like, wow. Um, and then talking about what type of spirits you can get from Kimbanda. There are Brazilians who don't have issues. There are Brazilians who don't have Pomegiras. So why do you think some random white person from the United States is going to have a Pomegira or an issue when you have no connection to any lineage from Brazil or Portugal or Angola. Like, it, it just, it's beyond me that people think they can have this privilege that they can just, like, pick up spirits from wherever they want and it's going to happen. But with Kimbana, it doesn't happen that way because, like I said, there's people in Brazil who will never have an issue or never have a Pomegira. They will never get possessed by one because they don't have them. They work with them through their their Pai or Mai de Santo or they work through whatever godparent that they have they don't they're, they you can't get a spirit that you don't have you don't get a, a spirit guide that is just not around you and it's not in your spiritual court or comes from you ancestrally or through initiation in another system now there are people who have or like they've gone through Apollo and sometimes they may have some type of spirit which is most People in Cuban spiritism always call, oh, you got a Negro, or you got a Negro, or you got a Congo, blah, 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 blah. This is a generic term, so they just say black folks. Um, you got spirits of black people around you. And most people who actually have African descent, it's kind of a no-brainer. It may be an ancestor, maybe a spirit guide, it may be from any type of things. When you get scratched in Apollo, you do inherit sometimes some Congos that are specific to the lineage or lineage that's some type of Congo root that's outside of that house. Now, a lot of my Congos, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why, but they did not speak Spanish. But when I started switching things into Kimbanda and working with Umbanda, and um, even when I started going to Brazil, um, they started to come through more and they started pe speaking Portuguese or Umbundu and they were speaking their natural language. So a lot of the Congo spirits that I had from the beginning, before I got scratched and even after, um, I found out they weren't as specifically from Cuba or from the Caribbean. They were from um, other places where they're speaking Portuguese and not <sighs> Spanish because believe it or not, Spanish is not a real African language. It's not a Congo language. It's Portuguese or French. So a lot of people don't know basic history about the slave trade or basic history about, you know, Africa. But Spanish is not one of those languages that took foot in Africa. Um, even when the Moors went to Spain and took over Spain, they were speaking Castellano, uh, Basque, a lot of different other languages, along with Arabic and their natural, 
their natural North African languages. It was not this super proliferation of Spanish. That wasn't only until the Spanish converted the indigenous people and, and then later the slaves, but Congo people are not speaking Portuguese. If you talk to a dead Congo person, even today, they're not speaking Portuguese. I mean, they're not speaking Spanish um, unless they're actually Cuban or Dominican or what so have you, Venezuelan, Mexican. Um, so with this Kimbanda stuff, it's like, how can you take an Afro, Afro Portuguese, Afro Brazilian spirit and then say that the random, now I have Asian people in the United States claiming they have them. Um, there's Korean people claiming they have them. There's Vietnamese people claiming they have issues. Japanese, Chinese, French, um, Norwegian. Hey, what's up? All these people claiming that they got issues in Pomageras and most of the time they got a demon, a negative spirit, or something that they got from playing too much with hoodoo or um, fake-ass Palo with some weird spiritual pot. So... Or people are literally scratching them into some bullshit when they don't have the lineage to scratch someone in. But who knows? Maybe, you know, people in House of Kimbanda somehow tapped into the Apollo lineage of Roque without permission um, in Cuba. Maybe somebody's scratching those people who never would have been scratched otherwise in the United States. Who knows? But that still doesn't make it Kimbanda because Apollo is not Kimbanda. Kimbanda is not Palo. Some people practice it certain ways. Some other practice other ways. Some of it's similar to Palo. Some of it's not. But what the shit that people show in the United States is definitely not Kimbanda. And when they say, you know, they try to show that they're real Kimbanderos. And just because you kill a rooster or a chicken does not mean you're a real Kimbandero. And most people do not use the term Tata unless you actually going through Candomblé, Angola, Bantu, and you've done seven years and call yourself a Tata. Some Kimbanderos will call themselves a Tata, but that's after, that's kind of a respect title, meaning they know their shit. You can't be out the gate or after even two years calling yourself a Tata in Kimbanda. It just doesn't work that way. Um, not in Sao Paulo, not in Minas Gerais, not in Rio, not in Bahia. It just doesn't work that way. So people especially non-African, non-Hispanic people in the United States calling themselves Tata, whatever. And I'm just like, hey, there's people like Jesse Hathaway who's been doing it longer than me, apparently, and he still don't get no shit right because I've heard, I've known people that have gone to his festas, or if you want to call them festas, um, and nobody gets possessed. Um, how can you have Kimbanda if no one ever goes in trance? It doesn't work that way. These are spirits that come down in trance. These are like almost like Gede from Haitian Voodoo. They always come down. Um, they come down to drink. They come down to smoke. They come down to party. They come down to do readings. They come down to do um, healings. They work with fire. They work with all types of stuff. And... That's part of the tradition. That's part of the reason why they come because they're very close to earth type of spirits and they come back to do help. And then they also not just do works, but they they want to relive life. They want to have fun. It's without that, you're not really working Kimbanda. You're not really or or they say it's not Umbanda. Of course, it's not Umbanda because they can't get a lot of people who shit on Umbanda. Usually it's because. They don't get possessed with any of those spirits. So it's a good cop out to say, oh, well, we're Umbanda does this. Umbanda is blah, 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 blah. But they don't understand that the basis of Kimbanda comes from Umbanda. Like this comes from the Spiritismo. It's not just something someone just randomly created. And it's not definitely not nothing. It's not its own Congo tradition like Palo. So, yeah, it's just a lot of fuckery. A lot of people mixing stuff with Goetia, and they think tell people it's a solo type of thing. It's not really a solo. As much as I wish it could be solo, I have my own sentimentals here. I have my sentimentals. Literally, I pay every month for storage with all my issues and pomegranates in 
storage in Sao Paulo right now. I literally have like seven of them. So the real, the ones I show in my house now, they're the small ones. The real big ones are in Brazil. And then some people have huge ones that are like at stand, like look as big as some people's ogoons. So I don't know how these people have these tiny, almost saucer cup pombajiras with a triton sticking out of it and some shells and coins and dirt. And they said that's a sentimental uh, pombajira, especially pombajira, Kalunga. It's like you don't even have, if you don't have the right ferramentas, which are the iron tridents when the different configurations and each configuration is for a different type of spirit, a different type of pomegranate, a different type of issue. If you don't have that as the basic ingredient, you don't have a sentimento. It just doesn't. Nobody has a shrine for Eshu of Pomegranate with just a, a, a fork triton, iron triton sticking out of it. It just, it's just not done. You don't, you don't have it. And there's certain stuff that you need to get from Brazil. There's certain stuff that, you know, some of it is reminiscent of Apollo, but there's certain types of ingredients that they are hard to get. You, it's a lot easier to get in Brazil than here. And if you don't have none of that, you don't really have a shrine. And so a lot of people are playing around. A lot of people are doing a hustle because like apparently leukemy is not good enough or maybe people don't want to fuck with them in leukemy anymore and they want to do a new hustle and they want to remake themselves but it's 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 getting out of control i mean i watched this shit happen for like i said before 2012 2011 and luckily a couple houses kind of fall to the side because all the people dying and getting sick and other bullshit but it's just like well, I'm seeing people from Lukumi who are like peddling fake Orishas and now they're doing Kimbanda. Like I'm still trying to figure out how this dude has Oshimari from from Brazil that he's trying to he's been giving out to all these gay folks in Miami. I'm um, telling them that Oshimari is a patron of gay folks. And I'm just like I had someone literally contact me, meet me up one time and said, oh, I saw you on YouTube. Blah, blah, blah. My godfather, so and so. He gave me Ocean Mare, and it's for gay people, folks. And I'm just like, what? How does a, a Cuban American have something from Condom Blay and never been initiated in Condom Blay? I've heard that happen. Even Willie Ramos has gotten some stuff from Brazil without being initiated in Condom Blay. That's a side topic. But that you're selling it to other people. And saying that it's the patron of gay people, that's a little bit too much of bullshit for me. For other people, it's okay, but that's a little, yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, when people are changing narratives of Orisha and saying they're patron saints of prostitutes and trans and gay and everything else, it's like, <sighs> okay, whatever. I think what it really is, and as someone's talking about Paolo Mayombe, what I think is because a lot of LGBT people are not allowed in Paolo or um, it's become such a fuckery lately that they're trying to go into other things. They're trying to go into Congo-based traditions that they may not have be normally allowed to be in. They're trying to find alternatives, but they're not realizing that you have to actually be active. You have to be in a tejero. You have to be in a group. You have to have a steady shrine. You have to do things where you can help work with your mediumship and um, learn to work with these spirits and eventually go into trance with these spirits if you're able to go to trance at all. So it's not, and I've never seen any, a lot of people work with estrogen and pomegranates who don't go in trance. That's a little weird thing. Um, if you don't, if you can't go into it and, or if you don't have a shrine, then it's, it's just very weird. I've never seen anyone who doesn't go into trance go hard on Kim Bonda like that, like I see people in the United States, because they get in a sentimental to help with their spirit guide and to help work with things and for protection. They don't be feeding it all the time and getting it to do work like that. It's just, it's weird. Even Baba Wiles in, in um, Brazil, who come from that background, have issues in Pomegranates. They may not go into trance anymore, but... Um, they still have them because, you know, they've been working on them since 
there were children and passed down from family, etc., etc. A lot of people actually get passed down spirits as well. So um, there's plenty of people I know who are mediums of a certain spirit, whether it's like a Sagano or a Pomager, Eshu, Marinero, something, and that spirit was the exact same spirit that their grandparents, like grandmother, went into trance with, or their grandparent, or their grandfather, or great grandparents. So sometimes these spirits get passed down in families, and they get passed down um, through lineages from your house as well. So yeah, I will probably do another video. Talk to you later. Bye.